It's time for another installment of Sea Hunt. It's still alive here on Scooby Shack Radio. And this time we're going back to the last episode of Season 3, Episode 39, Man Overboard. Now, Man Overboard premiered on October 1st, 1960. The opening scene shows Mike racing his Eddie Craft boat towards what he calls a pleasure cruiser. He's responding to a man overboard report given his official capacity as a Coast Guard Auxiliary Officer. He reaches the pleasure craft, the Sea Devil. It's about a half mile offshore. On the boat are three people. There's Lee Bottom, Gwen Hardy, and her sister Lola. They tell him that Gwen's husband went over the side. Mike doesn't wait for more information. He needs to react quickly. Back on his boat, he flings his doubles over his back and jumps in for the underwater search. On the bottom, Mike tells us the conditions are ideal. It's a nice sandy bottom, not really much current, and if someone did go overboard, they they would be easy to find, but he doesn't find them. As he's expanding his search, he does find something, a pair of pants, and in the pocket, is the wallet of Blair Hardy with ID, money, and all. Mike is puzzled. He stuffs the pants back in the rocks and heads to the upline of the Sea Devil. As he's searching the hull of the boat, he notes a particular shiny new hook. It's not supposed to be there on the bottom. Mike climbs back on the boat. The three seem distressed. Did you find him? Is he alive? Mike tells them he didn't find anyone and starts to question them. What happened? Lola tells us she came on deck, saw Blair clutch his chest, and fall into the water, a suspected heart attack. Mike spots a set of well-worn scuba gear on the boat and asks about it. Blair loved to dive, Gwen tells us. Now he asks why no one jumped in to save him. Lola can't swim. Neither can Lee. Gwen tells us that she couldn't get in the water fast enough. Mike's had enough and wants to turn this over to the harbor police. He doesn't believe Blair Hardy drowned here. He doesn't believe the strange widow, bitter sister, or seagoing sailor who hates water. The next scene now shifts back on shore, and we see George Emerson walking down the pier towards Mike. He's an insurance investigator and he wants to talk to Mike about what he knows regarding Blair Hardy. Mike tells him that he doubts that Blair Blair drowned in that area. The visibility was perfect, with no turbulence. He says that maybe Blair took a powder and wanted to escape something or somebody. He doesn't think he's dead. That is when George tells us that Blair recently took out a $250,000 life insurance policy, and if he isn't dead... Well, they don't want to pay. So he asks Mike if he would be willing to work for him on this. Mike says, okay, he's got to pay for his boat, and tells us this case is going to be solved underwater. But before Mike Nelson heads underwater, he pays a visit to the local uh, scuba shop and discovers that Blair bought a complete set of new scuba gear right before he went missing. It's all coming together. The hook on the bottom of the sea dragon was a perfect place to hang the gear so that when he falls in the water, he could reach the gear and get out of the area. We now shift back to the sea dragon. The plot is coming into focus. You see, Gwen is the beneficiary of the life insurance policy, and when she gets paid, she's going to give the money to Blair and be done with him so she and Lee can escape. Lee tells her that they will never be safe as long as Blair is alive. The police and insurance inspector will only be satisfied with a body, and he aims to give it to them. Just then, Lola comes on deck, and Lee tells her to stop eavesdropping. It's a bad time for all of them. Mike decides to take a swim out to the Sea Dragon and finds the brass hook on the keel is now gone. Now he must wait for the Sea Dragon to make a move. Back on the pier, Mike tells George that the sea dragon is getting underway and he wants to pursue her. George tells Mike he has his own boat and he can drive Mike's Eddie craft. Mike calls him Skipper as they head out. He doesn't want to spook Lee, Gwen, or Lola, so he tells his Coast Guard buddies to back off the sea dragon as they head as the sea dragon heads for Castle Reef, a place surrounded by needle rocks and lava forms. It is dangerous, and the boat needs to stay at least 300 yards from shore. 
Now Lee is gearing up with his scuba rig and a large spear gun. He aims to take care of Blair once and for all. It is now that we learn that Lola was along for the ride as an alibi. She has nothing to do with this caper. Mike also heads for sure. That's when we see Blair sitting on a rock in a wetsuit waiting. Lee sneaks up over the rocks and takes aim with a spear gun. Mike yells to watch out and the spear hits Blair in the left thigh. Lee now turns his attention to Mike, who hightails it back to the water, racing over the rocks with his fins on and his doubles. An underwater chase ensues. Mike is trying to lure Lee into a, f- into a fight. He's going to the heavy grass where he'll stand a fighting chance. As they enter some of the tall grass, looks more like kelp to me, we see Lee take out his dive knife. Mike jumps him, and an epic underwater wrestling scene unfolds, but this one is unlike any other. You see, they're also fighting these man-eating vines. The vines are choking them, and they can no longer fight. Mike is running out of air, and he cannot reach the surface because the vines are holding him down. It's only eight inches away. His solution? Cut his double hose and use it as a snorkel. Mike finds a rock to stand on while he waits the hour for the tide to run out when he can free himself from the vines. Lee wasn't as lucky. He didn't find a rock or a snorkel, and he is a goner. It's too late for Lee Bottom. As Mike makes his way back to the sea dragon, covered in the man-eating vines, Gwen tosses him a life ring. She thinks it's Lee. But once on board, with the vines pulled back, she yells, It's you! You killed Lee. You killed Lee. She heads below and comes up with a gun. But Gwen's no killer. She drops the gun and starts to cry. Mike asks her, what happened to your sister? Gwen tells us, she's all right. She's just down below, tied up. In the next scene, the sea dragon is back in port. And as Mike helps Lola off the boat, she tells us that she hates the sea. Mike says it's been pretty good to him and that she needs to keep her chin up. We never did find out what happened to Blair Hardy. I'm guessing the Harbor Police or Coast Guard went and got him. For sure, George Emerson and Mike Nelson saved the insurance company a cool quarter million dollars.